Hi, everybody. Welcome to Online Storytime. I'm Andrea, and today we are going to read books all about friends and making friends, um, because that is one of the best places to come and make friends is Storytime at the library. Uh, so we're going to go on and get started with our first book called Bear's New Friend by Karma Wilson. In the woods, in the sun, on a hot summer day, Bear feels an itching to head out and play. He goes to find Mouse, his littlest friend, but just as Big Bear heads round the bend, there's a clatter in the tree. Oh, what could it be? And the bear asks, who? I wonder who's in the tree. Let's see. Bear calls, is that Mouse who hides in the tree? But Mouse scurries up and squeaks, it's not me. Bear scratches his head. Who's hiding up there? Mouse shrugs his shoulders. Perhaps it is hair? Mouse starts to shout. Come out, friend, come out. And the bear asks, who? Who do you think's up there? Nobody answers. Who is it, asks Bear. They peek in the tree, but nobody's there. Bear cries, no one's here, but where did they go? Then Hare hops along and says, Howdy ho! Something sped past, going fast, fast, fast. And the bear asks, who? Hare says, let's go follow to see what we see. And bear says, is it Badger? Who else could it be? But there by a log with gopher and mole, Badger is peering into a deep hole. It's not Badger. Come look if you dare. There's someone down there. And the bear asks, who? Bear says, it's not us, but who is it then? I know, says Badger. It's Raven or Wren. But Raven and Wren flat down from the sky. We saw all our friends and thought we'd stop by. So it's not Raven or Wren either. I wonder who else. Up from the ground comes a rustling sound, and the bear asks, who? Who are you down there? Who is it, I say? Why stay in that hole? Why hide the whole day? Why don't you like us? Why, 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 why? Then a trembling voice says, because I'm shy. <gasps> Two eyes peekaboo, and the voice says, who? And the bear says, hi. You see the two little eyes right there? I'm bear. Howdy ho. That's mouse and that's hare. And gopher and mole are standing right there. Next to those bushes sit raven and wren. Come swimming with us in the pool by the glen. Please do not hide. Come on outside. Then, he's still in the hole. And owl says, who, who, who? Look, that's who it was. It was an owl. Hello, I'm Owl, and I'm sorry I hid. I'm just a bit bashful. That's why I did. Bear says, hello, friend. Come on, cries Mole, and they all scamper off to the old swimming hole. They splash and have fun in the hot summer sun with Bear's new friend. The end. I like that book a lot. Sometimes it's hard to make friends. You can be a little shy, but usually people are so nice, just like Bear and his friends. All right, time for the next one. This is called, Will You Be My Friend? All right, here we go. Bunny and Bird lived in an old apple tree. Bird lived at the top of the tree in a little hole. And Bunny lived at the bottom of a tree in the in a big hole. Bunny wanted to be friends. When Bird sang, Bunny came out to listen. Will you be my friend? Bunny asked. But Bird felt too shy to answer. She popped back in her little hole. So she a little shy like Owl was? A little bit. One night, a big storm came. The wind blew hard. Rain fell all around. Bird hid in her little hole, and Bunny hid in his big hole. You see them hiding from the rain? 
the rain blew into Bird's home, she was getting wet. She started to feel very, very cold. Bird did not know where to go to get out of the storm. She started to cry. Bunny heard Bird crying. She saw that Bird was getting wet. Come down here, Bunny called to Bird. Bird felt shy, but she was wet and she was cold. Bird decided to take a chance. She flew down, down, down to Bunny. My home is all wet, Bird told Bunny. Bunny said, come in here where it's dry. Bird went in and Bunny made a cozy bed for Bird. Don't worry, he said, you're safe here. Bird felt much better now. She was warm and dry. Bunny and Bird fell asleep on the soft, sweet grass. They're cozy friends. The next morning, Bird's nest was wet and soggy. She felt very sad. I need a new home, Bird said. Bunny said, I'm your friend, I will help you. Bird flew off to find soft things for her nest and Bunny set out to find soft things too. Along the way, Bunny met Chipmunk and Squirrel. Will you help fix Bird's home, Bunny asked. Yes, we will help, they said. It's really nice, isn't it? Squirrel found fern leaves in the wood and Chipmunk found dandelion fluff in the meadow. Bunny found cattail puff by the pond and then they all hurried back to the old apple tree. Chipmunk and Squirrel ran up the apple tree and down the apple tree to bring all the soft things up to Bird. Bird took the new soft bedding into her little hole in the tree. She, soon her new nest was finished. A pretty new nest. Bird felt warm and happy inside. She had a new home and she had new friends and she did not feel so shy anymore. Thank you, said Bird to all the animals. I never knew I could have so many friends. Then Bird flew down to sing a special song of thanks to her good friend, Bunny. The end. All right, I think it's time for a song. Are you guys ready? Okay. This is a song about Friends, <laughs> good job. All right, and it's called 10 Good Friends. So we're gonna do this song with our 10 fingers, but we're gonna start like this, okay? And we're gonna get them up, okay? One best, two best, three best friends, four best, five best, six best friends, seven best, eight best, nine best friends, the 10 best friends are we. All right, you gonna try it with me this time? All right, start like this. And then each time I say the number, you hold up another finger, okay? I'll go slow. One best, two best, three best friends, four best, five best, six best friends, seven best, eight best, nine best friends, the 10 best friends are we. All right, good job, friends. All right. Are you guys ready for the next story now? All right, good job. This one is called Nuffle Bunny 2, a case of mistaken identity. One morning, not so long ago, Trixie took a walk with her daddy. By now, Trixie really knew how to talk. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show Amy and then I'll show Meg and then I'll show Margo and then I'll show Jane and then I'll show Leela and then I'll show Rebecca and then I'll show Noah and then I'll show Robbie and then I'll show Tashi and then I'll show Casey and then I'll show Connie and then I'll show Parker and I'll show Brian and then, and talk and talk. <laughs> Trixie was excited because she was talking her, she was taking her one of a kind Nuffle Bunny someplace very special. She's taking it to school. There's her school. She's going to go upstairs. She's walking down the hallway. She's walking to her classroom. And she has her bunny. Trixie couldn't wait to show Nuffle Bunny to Miss Greengrove and all her friends in pre K. But just as her daddy kissed her goodbye, Trixie saw Sonia. <gasps> what does Sonia have? Is that a bunny too? I think it is. Suddenly, Trixie's one of a kind Nuffle Bunny wasn't so one of a kind anymore. 
The morning did not go well. The afternoon was worse. Can you see what they're doing? Are they fighting over their bunnies right there? And what happened when they, when they fought over their bunnies? Can you see? The teacher took them away. When the school bell rang, Miss Greengrove returned the Nuffle Bunnies, and the day got better. And now they have their bunnies back. They're going to play. Then, before she knew it, it was time to go home. Tracy ate her dinner, devoured her dessert, brushed her teeth. You see who's with her all, all the time? Is that her bunny? And tried to escape the mommy and daddy robots from Planet Snurp. <laughs> and half past bedtime, Trixie was tucked in. But a few hours later, <gasps> Trixie realized something. Wonder what it is. Trixie marched into her mommy and daddy's room and said, that is not my bunny. It's not her bunny. Whose bunny would it be then? Is it Sonia's bunny? Trixie's daddy tried to explain what 2.30 a.m. means. He asked, can we deal with this in the morning? Trixie's daddy went to the phone. Is she going to let him wait? Mm -mm. <laughs> Before he even made it down the stairs, ring! The phone rang. We have your bunny, said a man's voice on the other end. Who do you think has her bunny? Probably Sonia, since she has Sonia's bunny. We have yours, replied Trixie's daddy. Arrangements were made. And Trixie and her daddy rushed across the neighborhood. Trixie did not want to be late. And neither did Sonia. Oh, they're coming across too. There was an exchange, and the Nuffle Bunnies were back where they belonged. They have their right bunnies now. I was so worried about my bunny, said Sonia. So was I, Trixie replied. Then they both said, I'm glad you got your bunny back at the exact same time. And that is how Trixie found her first best friend. The end. Oh, wait, there's more. It's an epilogue. <laughs> the next morning, both Trixie and Sonia rushed to school, and the new best friends had a lot of catching up to do. Do you want to play with my Nuffle Bunny? Sure. Do you want to play with mine? Are they sharing now? Yeah. And that is the end. Time for our next book. This is called A Splendid Friend Indeed by Suzanne Bloom. Let's see. We have bear and goose. There's goose. Who's he climbing on? Is he climbing on bear? What are you doing? Are you reading? I like to read. Do you want to hear me read? Does Bear look very happy about it? Mm -mm. Duck, or Goose took his book. Now what are you doing? Writing? I like to write. Do you want to see me write? What are you doing now? Thinking? Does Bear look happy? <laughs> Thinking makes me hungry. Are you hungry? I think I'll go make a snack. I'm back. I made a snack. <laughs> I wrote a note. I'll read it to you. I like you. Indeed, I do. You are my splendid friend. That's a really nice note. Thank 
thank you. I like you too. Indeed, I do. Yeah. Are they friends? Yeah. You are my splendid friend. My splendid friend, indeed. Yeah. The end. Now look, are they having their snack now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it's time for another song. Are you guys ready? All right, this one we're gonna clap. And I think once I start singing, you might recognize this song. If you're friendly and you know it, clap your hands. If you're friendly and you know it, clap your hands. If you're friendly and you know it and you really wanna show it. If you're friendly and you know it, clap your hands. If you're friendly and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're friendly and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're friendly and you know it, and you really wanna show it. If you're friendly and you know it, stomp your feet. All right, we're gonna do one more. If you're friendly and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're friendly and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're friendly and you know it, and you really wanna show it. If you're friendly and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. You guys are all so friendly. All right, time for the next book. It's called Boy and Bot. A boy was collecting pine cones in his wagon when he met a robot. Hi, said the boy. Want to play? The robot blinked. Affirmative. They played? They had fun. But as they rolled down the hill, a rock bumped the robot's power switch and the robot turned off. What's wrong? The boy asked. The robot did not answer. Are you sick? The boy asked. The robot still did not answer. I must help him, the boy said. Is the robot sick? Oh, he just got turned off. The boy fed him applesauce after he took him home and he read the robot a story and he tucked him in. Good night, bot, the boy whispered and climbed into bed. Later, the boy's parents peeked in on him. They did not see bot behind the door. The door bumped bot on his power switch. Beep, bot turned on. What is wrong, bot asked. The boy did not answer. Did you malfunction? Bot asked. The boy still did not answer. I must help him, Bot said. So what does he, he think he turned off? But is he just asleep? So he took the boy home. He gave him oil and he read the boy an instruction manual. He was bringing him a spare battery when the inventor walked in. Stop! The inventor shouted, that's a boy. Do boys need batteries? No. The boy woke with a start. Then he saw Bot. The boy smiled. Bot, you are cured. Bot lit up. Boy, you are fixed. The inventor called boy's parents. Then he drove boy home. Good night, bot, boy said. Good night, boy, bot said. Want to play tomorrow? Boy nodded. Affirmative. And the friends did. Look at all the fun stuff they're doing. They pick apples. They're watching the birds. Are they swimming? Drawing pictures. Are they friends? Yes. The end. All right, we have time for one last book. This is one of my favorite books. Save the best for last. <laughs> this one is called Corduroy. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home.
The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button on one of his shoulder straps. Let's see right there. He's got a button gone. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost the button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang, into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Oops. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going on his rounds in the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with all the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Is she going to get to take Corduroy? Yeah. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. Did you find him a button? Yeah. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa and gave him a big hug the end. And that is all for today. But I love doing story time with you all. And I can't wait to see you next week, friends. Bye.